Hey, <laughs> my name is uh, Jeff Matula. I'm night shift supervisor in Schulenburg, BWI. I've uh, been with the company. Uh, April 5th will be 20 years. Uh, I pretty much enjoyed working here all my life. That's why I'm still here. But I was going to tell you all how we get started on our shift. Uh, I got 14 guys with me right now. That's our full crew. be 15 with me. Uh, we get here. Me and my other crew chiefs, we get here around 6, 6, 10 after 6. Uh, our books and tickets are printed out already for us. The ladies in office get them ready for us. Uh, we write them all, da all down on our bar sheet, our weight stops and, you know, lines per, per trip. We get all that done. Uh, I write all our names down. Well, we, we have a puller and a loader for each trip. So, and my guys crisscross every night. One night I have half the crew pull, another half loads for them. Next night, the ones that was loading, pull. The ones that were pulling, load the next night. Uh, pretty much we ship out a lot of stuff here. As far as I know, more than any other branch, as far as weight goes. Uh, as far as I've seen, I've seen us have 28 to 30 trips in one night. Which, you know, we was here till dinner time the next day. But, and then we were shorthanded a few people. But. Uh, like I said, we get here, my men get here, my loaders get here around 6.30 so they can start doing their repacks. Pullers, my pullers, they don't have to be here till 7. I just ask my loaders to get here 30 minutes early so they can get started on their repacks where they don't fall behind their, their puller. Uh, I try to arrange my guys by their speed. Some are slower, some are faster. I keep my faster ones, faster ones together and my slower ones together. I don't want to put a fast puller with a slow loader because that loader would be so far behind and I don't want to put a slow puller with a fast loader what a loader ain't gonna have enough to do so I put my fast and fast together and my slow to slow together pretty much it works like clockwork that way as uh, far as that goes they get started uh, like I said I got a lot of new guys now asking a lot of questions and stuff helping them um, as far as warehouse goes, uh, day shift's doing a good job. You know, we're finding most of the stuff where it's supposed to be, but you know, um, at the toward the halfway through the night, you know, we check our trips, walk in the trailer, you know, make sure everything's looking good. Or boys got a problem, they'll holler at me, tell me to come over. Uh, and then we just wind like that, you know, as the books go down. I scale the trucks, everything that weighs 30,000 and up, I run across the scale. Uh, on the trucks that weigh 40,000 to 42,000, I will write the weights down for the driver to see. But the trucks that are 39 and less, I scale them, make sure they're good, but I don't write the weights down. Which all my drivers, drivers know that already. Like I said, if the truck's in the yard, it got scaled. Uh, if we got problems with being overgrossed on either the axles on the truck or act rear axles on the trailer we got to back it back up unload it rearrange some stuff or if it's overgrows totally the whole, the whole the whole truck and load well we just got to cut a pallet or something wish we've been riding pretty good on that but it doesn't matter if we're on the wet time of year like it's been raining here our dirt pilots way more than they usually do during the summertime when it's drier so me and the transportation transportation manager kind of cut back the weight on the trucks when we got wetter days you know but we've been getting good rain here the last few months. As uh, far as that scaling, then we knock all our guys, knock all that out, then we clean up our mess, make sure everything looks good, everything's locked down, and we go to the house. Uh, I don't know what else y'all need to know. Uh, well, uh, what schedule do you guys work? Uh, I got two different set schedules for my guys. My, there's one schedule that they work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're off Thursday night, four straight. And that's the guys that have been here the longest, the ones with more seniority. The newer employees start out, they work Sunday, off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that, like I said, this goes by seniority. You know how long you've been here. If I, if I lose a guy off the four straight, well, the next guy with seniority off of Thursday so we get to move up to the four straight schedule. Which a lot of the guys like the four straight, that way they got a three-day weekend. 
for it. And is that an equal amount? I'll keep a few more on Thursday night because they're more the less seniority, you know, less knowledge and more the newer guys. I keep six on Monday night, which is six of the longest term guys. And then, uh, what you got, Ray? I don't know. Totally see if you get Carlos. All right. Hey, Ray. Say hi to you two. Hey, hey that's Ray Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about now? Uh, the four tens, how you keep a. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll keep, like I said, keep six on Monday. That's my longest term guy's been here, more knowledge. Most of the time, my faster ones. So I don't need as many. And then I keep eight on my Thursday night. Like I said, less knowledge, you know, the least amount of time working here, and they're a little slower. So I need a little extra help on them, baby. That's why I keep two extra guys there. Uh, but that works out pretty good. Okay. As far as uh, as far as the trips, the way that transportation builds them, what's uh, what's the max cube and max we weight? It, we cut it off at eighteen hundred, and weight wise, the ones mostly we could get scaled out where they're legal is going to be around forty two three. Keep it between forty two thousand even and forty two five. But okay. then again, it matters if we got a lot of dirt pallets going in there. We got a lot of dirt pallets. We may need to cut it back to this forty thousand. But if it's more fertilizer, seed, or anything else besides dirt, we can get you know somewhere around 42.5 and get it to scale out where it's not over you know over gross total. Uh, but sometimes that don't matter either. A lot of the seed we get in, you know, if they're sticking 51 pounds in a sack, uh, you know that'll that screw us that way right? too. You know, yeah. instead of being 50 yeah, pounds a pack, they can weigh 51, 52, and say a. Uh, 850 pack special is not going to weigh out. Okay. But it just matters, varies on a bunch of things. Hey, introduce us to this guy. Who's this? This is uh, Robbie, my lead man, first man in charge. When I ain't here, he, he's the man. Robbie, how long have you been VWI? Nine years. Nine years, all right. Ten years, my boy. No, it's Christmas. All right, how about, uh, you know, we see up here you've got, uh, got the errors tracked. Tell us about tracking errors in Schulberg. Well, I get the short report every week from Peggy. She runs it for me. And I got my 1910 option, and it tells me all the credit reports, you know, how they credit a customer or something being short. I got to punch that in, and it takes me to the original invoice number that was on that trip where it was shorted. So I got to write that down. And I put that back in 1910, and it tells me the date of when that, it was invoiced out, got shipped. I take that down and then I go 3950 and say if it's a bag of BDO4 short, I put around the date from, you know, 3950 we put the dates on top and I type in that code BDO4 and I got the invoice number and I just scroll down on 3950 till I find that invoice number and then it tells me who was the puller, you know, who pulled that item. And that's how I keep tracks of, you know, who did the short and whatever, you know, it could be a customer that called in something two weeks or when it got delivered. That way, you know, if the driver doesn't write it down or doesn't catch it, you know, that would be the simplest, honest way of catching, you know, knowing who did it. And like I said, I just keep track of that and uh, for my guys, and I keep it on the board up there, and every time they have an error, it just adds to their total. And then I keep the dollar amount of shorts per month, and then I total it up for the full, uh, full year then. But it's something for them to see. Come on in. Somebody's creating a lot of errors, you know, what they need to work on. Yeah, hey, I've never uh, redone a wrapper for like the wrapper. Ain't nobody else out there? Yeah, I need a little wrapper. Alright, give it a minute. We're about through it. Alright, so you do all of the research for your team's errors? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Used to back in the day, the office would do it, but it was. I don't know, I'd just sooner do it myself because it was just getting mixed up with them because it just worked out better with me doing it. Okay. You know, because I can talk to the drivers then, you know, I call them during the day. I can't call them at night. And if I'm at home, and that's the only time I got to call them, because a lot of them go to bed early, so I'll just call them from the house. So what is it that you're calling the drivers for? About a case a customer called in, you know, say if a guy told me he pulled, uh, you know, pulled this case or two cases, I just double check with the driver if he checked it off, because he, you know, he signs it or the customer. And this is it. Do you remember seeing these two cases? And if he tells me yes, they were there, well, 
how can that go against my guys? And you know, with the customer calling in, and a, you know, a week later saying they didn't get it. You don't get one of the cases. And I just double check with them. Is this something to double check with? You know, it doesn't hurt to double check. You know, sometimes the drivers know, and sometimes they don't. It's like a 50/50 chance if they remember, or even if they remember. You know, some of them, you know, don't remember. But I got some drivers that, oh yeah, I remember it was there. All right, and today we were spending some time with uh, inventory control. And we saw a note that you'd left, and uh, they said that sometimes you call them during the day. W oh, what, what are some of the things you call inventory control about? James, am I James and Randy? Yeah. Well, I call James. It's something to just to double check, same way, double check on to make sure they checked it themselves. You know, because a lot of stuff don't add up for me. Because I see them, they returned it. You can go on 3950 and see if they added it back to inventory. You know, they'll add the case back. But when I go check the shelf, if it's supposed to be five boxes there, but there's only four boxes there. So that's telling me they added that one back to inventory, but we're short one case on a shelf. So to me, that case was in that trip. You know, two plus two equals four, you know? <laughs> so that's why I do that, you know? And then I asked them, I'll call them, well, this ain't adding up to me. Did, well, did it get checked or why did it get added back when there's only four there and we added it back? Now it says five in the system when there's only four on the shelf. So. That's a few things I double check on, you know, something if I know I can go check or we don't have, you know, like 500 cases available of it where it's on overflow and where I ain't going to go up there and count, you know, right. all that. But if it's something, you know, just got one overflow and, you know, cases on the shelf, that's something, you know, simple I don't have to waste a whole, whole lot of time on. I can go check that real quick and make sure everything, you know, adds up where, where it's supposed to be. All right. You know, during busy season, I don't, I run out of time doing that. Because, like I said, I got a lot of new hires now. And they got a lot of questions, and you're running around here, and I'm trying to get my stuff done, and they're asking a million questions, and you're sc scaling trucks, and uh, it just gets to be hectic sometimes. But, you know, sometimes my lead people are helping me, but they're out there pulling and loading, because if they ain't out there working, we're just in here that much longer. So they're out there doing their thing, and I'm doing mine. So, But if I ever get in a bind, I'll holler at one of them. If, if I'm out there scaling a truck or helping somebody else, and you know they'll help them out for me if it's possible. So, all right. Anything else you would like the other uh, supervisors to know about uh, Schulenberg Shipping? Rock and pop. That's all I know. All right. Tap. Thanks for the time, buddy.